Hi folks, it's Connie from Faf Designs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a furniture painter and I'm also a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. In the video today, I am going to show you how to remove wax off a piece of furniture to get it ready to be painted. So quite a lot of furniture pieces that I come across have got a heavily waxed um, f finish on them and that needs to be stripped off before you can paint. It can get a little bit messy, there's a few pieces of equipment that I will show you in a second that will help you, but it is a job that needs to be done before you can paint. So, hopefully this video will be useful, and if you've got any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below. So, firstly, you might want to know how to actually identify a piece that has been waxed um, as it's not always easy to tell by eye um, but there's a couple of different ways you can do that so the first one is just look at it if it looks like it has a very very low sheen um, wax isn't a high shine finish it's not a really glossy finish it's got a really beautiful low luster the second way you can test for wax is by taking your thumbnail fingernail and scraping across the surface. If you get a buildup of product underneath your nail, it's normally wax. Varnish, again, wouldn't scrape off. Wax scrapes off with a, a nail or a scraper. Um, so you can tell that way. The third way is get some sandpaper and scuff a little bit of the area. If it clogs your sandpaper up and leaves residue on the sandpaper, that normally indicates wax as well. Uh, so there's just a couple of ways that you can identify whether a piece is waxed or not. So, as I mentioned previously, this piece behind me is waxed. It's how it came. Um, here in the UK, we have quite a lot of wax pieces of furniture. This type of furniture is renowned for having a heavy wax finish. Also, pine um, can be waxed as well. So, it is a process that has to be done before you can paint. Um, otherwise you are just not going to have any decent sort of adherence to that surface your paint isn't going to stick and it's going to basically chip off and look a bit nasty so it's not a good idea to paint over wax unless it's best stand wax which is obviously water based um, so I'll show you through the I'll talk you through the pieces of equipment that I use in order to take that wax off and then I'll show you how I do it Okay, so the first thing that I use is one of these. This is a scraper. It's really, really sharp and it has a carbide blade and these are replaceable. You can get replaceable blades for them. I'll link all the products below as I always do on all of my videos so that you can see where, the, where I get them from. Um, but these, the two different sizes of blades, one is slightly longer than the other. This is quite good for getting into all the little angles and this one's got a handle so it allows you to add more pressure on. So these are really good for removing wax finishes but you can also remove varnish finishes with these as well. Um, it saves you having to sand so they're quite a useful bit of kit. Okay next piece of equipment is white spirits or mineral spirits. So your scraper is going to get the majority of your wax off and then this stuff is going to eat through the wax and remove it completely because if you do have any residue of wax on the surface that's basically just going to cause your paint to not stick and that'll chip off so you want to make sure that all the wax is completely gone before you start painting so you need white spirits and you also need wire wool or steel wool and this is to basically scrub the surface to get rid of the wax with this to agitate it and to activate it basically and then you have to wipe it off so I'll show you what I do with these three pieces of equipment to get wax off a surface and ready for painting so the scraper means that you don't have to scrub as much with white spirits so I am just taking off as much of the wax as I can with this scraper you don't need to press on super hard the blade is very sharp and you're only just taking off a couple of millimeters worth of wax if that so 
sometimes if the surface is a little bit uneven this piece is quite a rustic piece um, it's not going to get into all of the little nooks and crannies but it's just getting the majority of it off it's also a good idea to work with the way that the grain runs so my the wood grain on this particular piece um, is going from left to right that's why I'm working that way if you work the other way you run the risk of damaging the wood and making some um, quite big scratch marks in it so it's always a good idea to work with the grain Once the majority of wax has been removed with the scraper, I then pour a small amount of white spirits onto the surface, agitate it with a wire wool. This basically just starts to dissolve the wax and then wipe away the residue with a shop cloth. You can see the build up on the shop cloth there. I usually do two passes and that's just to make sure that I've got every single last little bit of wax off that surface. The drawers are all done and put to one side and then when I do the main body of the piece, whichever side that I'm stripping wax off, I always make sure that it's flat on its back, if that makes sense. It seems a lot easier to lay it down and to work on the top surface rather than trying to work vertically. Um, because obviously you can get more pressure and obviously you're pouring the white spirits. Um, so that's just how I do it you don't have to but this is what I mean so I've laid the desk flat on its back and I'm going to work on this surface and then when I work on the sides I'll tip it up so that I'm always working on a flat surface so this is what I mean I can get a more even consistent pressure with the scraper when the piece is flat on its back it also means the white spirits isn't going to run off the surface as soon as you pour it on um, and yeah I just find it easy to work this way when I'm removing wax as opposed to vertically okay so that is the elbow grease stage done this is all the rubbish uh, this every surface that I'm painting has had the wax removed with the scraper the white spirits and the wire wool the next step funnily enough is to clean um, it's really important you don't skip this step when you've done the process bit that I've just done um, because some white spirits can actually leave an oily residue behind so it's important to remove that because again it can interfere with the adhesion of the paint so use a really good degreasing cleaner I'm using Dixie Bell's White Lightning just to make sure that that surface is completely um, oil free ready to paint so don't skip the step even though you think you might be able to because we've just used the white spirits it's really important to clean once you've removed the wax I usually use a dish sponge with a scouring pad on when I have used white spirits that's just to make sure that all of the oily residue has been removed so I'll scrub it all over and then I'll rinse it off with warm water and use a microfiber cloth to rinse off. Okay, so everything has had a really, really good clean with white lightning and I've rinsed it off with nice warm water. I've actually let it dry overnight um, before I sand so it's been dry all night in the workshop and then I'm going to give it a sand with my Festool it's got a 120 grit sheet on there and this is basically just to um, smooth out the surface obviously we've taken the wax finish right back to bare wood but when you use the scraper and wire wool it can leave the surface a little bit uneven so we're just going to take it make sure it's nice and smooth and then we are ready to paint
again with sanding go in the direction of the grain um, and just run your hand over it to make sure that it's nice and smooth So as part of the prep work for this, I've actually um, put two coats of boss over the raw wood. That's because this type of wood has a tendency to bleed. And what that means is um, the tannins that are in the wood will seep through into the paint and they can sometimes discolor your paint, especially if you're working with very light colors, but you can also get it on dark colors as well. The color that I'm using is relatively dark. Um, but I just want to basically use Boss as an insurance to make sure that I don't get any of that bleed through problem um, And it literally took me, I don't know, 20 minutes last night to just apply a really quick coat of Boss on I left it to dry for an hour and then I applied another coat on over the top of that And then I've left that to dry overnight and we are good to go with painting the colour of paint that my customer chose is Cobalt Blue from Dixie Bowl Paint and it's part of their chalk mineral paint range. So I am using a little spritz of water to make the paint go further and to just get that really, really smooth finish that I want. I'm using a synthetic mini brush to help that smooth finish as well. Once the paint was dry, I sealed it with Best Dang Wax in clear. I used a blue applicator sponge to apply it and then buffed off with a microfiber cloth. I used Best Dang Wax in black to create a little bit of shading around the draw edges and I fixed some handles on which I painted in Bunker Hill Blue. And here's how the piece turned out. It's a pretty bold statement piece, but I love it. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you found it useful. And make sure you are subscribing to my YouTube channel.